Zambia's agricultural sector is generally characterized by crop, fish, and livestock farming, be it at small scale, emergent, and commercial level. In most parts of the country, the value of livestock is evident through the role it plays in, among other things, uniting people through either dispute resolution or as dowry in marriages. <laughs> I'm yet to see someone who has taken children to school, for example, by selling crops. The most common thing is you either sell a chicken, a goat, or cattle to pay for school fees. So you find that uh, these, uh, the, the keeping of animals has really contributed to taking people to school. Even in terms of when someone has a case to pay, normally you are not charged in terms of bags of maize. You are charged in cattle, you know, a chicken. You know, when you do something wrong, normally it's traditional. You don't take a batch of rape. You are going to take a goat to pay for your, whatever you've done. Even to take someone to the hospital, it's easy to stand by the roadside, sell your chicken, raise money, and take that person to the hospital. So the contribution is huge. Nearly each and every uh, smallholder household in the rural areas, they own at least one type of livestock. And from the interviews with the farmers, they've indicated to say they use livestock for a number of things, ranging from social activities, events, uh, weddings, as a way of paying a uh, bridal price and all that. And also they use livestock as their source of income. And what we've uh, observed is that Livestock is tends to be a very liquid asset where farmers can easy, easily sell their livestock to generate uh, their income and sort out a number of problems uh, that they are facing at, in different households. Although the rate of economic growth could be much better, there is no doubt that most economies in the sub-Saharan Africa, which include Zambia, are growing. A growing economy, especially combined with a growing population, means that the consumption needs also go up. Key amongst these consumption needs is the growing demand for protein. The richest source of protein among all food groups are beef. And poultry. This means that the livestock sector is poised to take advantage of this growing need. So, is Zambia's livestock sector responding to this growing demand? In this two-part documentary, we discuss some of the opportunities and challenges for Zambia's livestock industry. Firstly, let's begin by understanding what the term livestock is. Livestock internationally is classified as uh, all the um, basically domestic animals that are kept at, uh, for agricultural production at, at a farm level. They can be birds or they can be domestic animals, goats, sheep, uh, pigs, cattle. Basically in this case we're talking about domestic animals for production purposes of things like milk, meat, skins, hides. And, and eggs for betterment of the human life. With the fast growing demand of the animal food sources for the much needed proteins, 
There is a great opportunity for smallholders to earn a better living through livestock rearing. The increasing demand for livestock products has in the recent past resulted in a steady growth of the livestock sector. So, what is the status of the livestock industry in Zambia? The, the state of livestock in Zambia is still in transformation. Uh, it's still moving, because if you recall historically, is that um, these things were um, livestock um, uh, uh, production um, has not moved as commensurate as the human population. Our population grows at uh, 2.8, roughly 3% per annum. That's the, popula the human population. Right now, we're sitting at around 16 million people. But if you check our livestock, our cattle, our goats, they don't grow as fast as the population. So you find that as the population is growing, our livestock is not growing as fast. So we end up having deficits and hence the need to, to, to import. So what, would, what we're saying is that the livestock needs to grow commensurate to the human population. So that it means that then the people are going to in, have enough income from the, the livestock. The people are going to have enough food security from the livestock, both the goats, the sheep, and the, the cattle. What happens in this case is that because your population is growing, on uh, average, then we need to say uh, each person is entitled to so many uh, livestock, so many, in this case, if you're looking at uh, our population of 4 million versus uh, 16 million. So in a ratio of uh, 1 to 4. So four people, one cow, which means that we're still way behind. If you look at our friends in Botswana and Namibia, it's one to one. One person, one cow. The population is actually, in some cases, it's even more than that, because like Namibia is 1.5 million people versus the population of 2.5 million. For Botswana, it's about 2.5 million people versus 2.5 million cattle. So it's one to one. So what happens in that case is that they can feed their own, but they have access to export. For Zambia right now, we don't have enough access to export, even if we had to have the, the market access into EU, into Asia, we don't have in, enough to export. And that's why we're saying that apart from getting this market access, we also need to increase our production. So the potential is there, and that's a set of play right now for the, for the, for the livestock production. Yes, the sector is growing, but what we have noticed is it's a number of households that are increasing in terms of those that are keeping animals as opposed to the number of animals that they are keeping. So the head size hasn't increased that much, but what has increased is the number of households that are keeping animals. So you, 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 you look at uh, goats from uh, the number of households that are keeping goats from year to year has been increasing more compared to the number of animals each household is, is keeping, like the average number of house, uh, animals the household is keeping. Yeah. So more households have, have come on board to rear livestock, at least one type of livestock. To answer these key questions, we will divide the livestock industry into four parts. Cattle, pigs, poultry, and sheep, and goats. In the first documentary, we concentrate on cattle. Zambia's cattle population stands at about 3 million according to the Rural Agricultural Livelihood Survey of 2015. Cattle consists of beef and dairy animals whose products are mostly consumed locally. With the cattle we're talking about uh, as a country right now at 4.2 million cattle, it offers instant income to our, um, to our farmers. Uh, generally, it's been regarded as a moving ATM. When you keep livestock, uh, you can convert them into cash anytime. It also offers employment to our, to our people. Um, it also um, offers food security. So these are the opportunities as a country because in any crisis, even when you don't have food today, you can drink a liter of milk and you're not starve. So it's, it's, it's one of those issues that offers a lot of um, security. But 
it's, it's, it's a all rounder. Apart from providing income for the people, but you can also provide food um, security. So it's feeding the people, but also providing income and employment to the to the to the citizens. And that's a big opportunity for for economic growth or for betterment of life. If you look at Zambia, 80 percent of the population in the rural areas depend on uh, on agriculture and livestock in particular. The agricultural contribution to gross domestic products now at 42 percent. Now. 28% of that is coming from, from livestock. So you see that livestock is a major contributor into the agricultural domestic product. What you notice is that, let's look at, if you look at Zambia, all the high maize production areas are areas with livestock. We're using livestock for draft power. So that's an indirect contribution, though it's not captured in the, in the gross domestic product, but it's a major contributor to the hectareage of other um, cro um, cash crops, like maize and uh, soya beans and others. I have 65 presently. I started with the two, then I went to last year, it reached up to 17. But presently, 65 dairy animals. They are milking average of 200 to 230 liters per day. So you, see, you know the, the supply is higher than the, the demand. I have uh, six children. They were at Lubanga Basic School, but presently they are in private schools. I'm paying through the dairy milking. Then the other thing, at least the, the, even the standard of living has changed because uh, mm -hmm. average I'm getting 15,000 per month, for which uh, about 2,000 is going just for home use, for domestic use. The other one for private school pupils. <laughs> Yeye yeah, zakuli hau na niyo na ikona kukutusa mama tata kau felari kazo na nizo na kana kweyo haa kufumana. Eee hey, nisha. Mane hape ni kwa kuli mawa itusisayo na chualo kwa kukekela mize mchualo. Ni kwa kuhohali cho chualo hamu litisa kwa misika. Kona kuli kumukia buto kwa holo. Na Alexa nga li kumukuba za mbu. Foko muni kubola cholo muma buchari uto vola. Eee okay. hey, nisha. Milelo ya kakiku kaku utari muna nuzi kikuli ikone kuni chincha wino waka wabupilo. Kuli mane ni na kwa piri. Na kona kubaneba ni muya ho buchari yaka yebo na kuli ze standard one. Mwoni kona kuli na utari komu za na mafela inge nile kisa, inge nivola anga kubea mwa buchari mwani. Kuli mane foku muneba wana baba baleka balusa kwa baba tantu bako na kutoleka kuna. Southern and western provinces are among the regions in Zambia where livestock forms the main source of livelihood for the populace in the two areas. For southern province, cattle define the wealth of a region. Gukala ngombe gumutonga, kote wabona ngombe kote wasiga gumuzi. Huh? Bujundu. Bujundu. Go until I'm gupa. Go until I'm here. What till I'm enda? Upe gumulando. What till I'm upa tope gumulando? Namwala and Monza districts lead southern province with high cattle population. Based on 2016 livestock census, Monze has a cattle population of about 155,058 cattle. And um, this is, we are proud about this because this is the second highest population of cattle in southern province. We are only second from Namwala district. So this already shows you the potential for the livestock sector. Um, we have a lot of potential when it comes to milk production, also beef production. In Amwala district, the population of cattle is more than the people. Cattle ownership signifies one's wealth and identity in society. In terms of the cattle population in Namwala, we have 139,945 against a human population of 101,851 people according to the 2010 census of population and housing. Of those cattle, there is a mixture of uh, both dairy animals and the uh, beef animals. Yes, but uh, mostly of our breeds are cross breeds of the beef type. In terms of beef, uh, we have four abattoirs which are dotted across the district of which farmers are able to sell their animals to the abattoirs. Yes, and uh, on average, I may say, 
about uh, 800 1,000 animals are slaughtered every month in the district. If you don't own animals in Namara, uh, then you are nothing. Because if we, let's say I have two oxen, maybe with an ox cut, I think my life will be anyway simple. Someone owning a, a house, in case he has problems, for him to find a buyer to buy that house, it takes long. Okay. But for someone who has cattle, like if you, you want 100,000 today, you just take your animals to the abattoir and you get the, your money. Yes. A rearing of beef cattle dominates most parts of southern province, with marketing opportunity existing locally and outside the province. The income I get from abattoir, for instance, if I take about six steers, um, a steer giving me roughly about three southern kwacha. You're talking of about three times six, that's about 18 southern kwacha. Bindaga Sambara, Tungombe Tobile, Guzomu Ngombe, yeah. Ndatola, Gukopa Beot, Kwa Utusamba. After Utusambara, Ndandoti, Bagali Basune, Ndandoti, Mbajinche, Ngule Ngombe, Ipi. So, Ndaga Wona Mali, Mbindaga, Gupanga, Mbaga, Bota, Ndaga Yoti, Intaliga, Ibe Business, eh. Ya Gula Ngombe, Nda Piruga Gumanda, Nda Ula Ngombe, Alimu Ndatola, Gukopa Beot, Nda Usambara. So mbinda ali wabu panga profeti, nda hata ya gula ngombe, nda hiya anganda. Waula, nda ula maybe five, utola kumaini, yu vile ajala. So, li mbinda ala, mbwe ya gula ngombe. Nda gali kuhia, nda ula ngombe ipi. So this time, nda ula ngombe about 600 to 700. While southern province is advancing with improved cattle breeds, the situation is a bit different with western province. The indigenous Barotse breed is the dominance of western province. It is known to be well adapted to conditions in western province that is mainly covered by flood plains. The Barossa breed itself has this huge potential of disease resistance. We are talking of still having animals despite the disease having ravaged the, the province. So we want to keep the Barossa breed, probably improve on it, its genetics by just selective breeding. But at the same time, we are also encouraging to some extent crossbreeding with other uh, livestock. You realize we don't have certain diseases like corridor here. The secret will be lying maybe in the, in the breed. Once we start indiscriminate crossbreeding, we may end up having the same diseases that are in eastern province and southern province. Now, if you look at our environment, in the plain there, you cannot put deep tanks because environmentally that is not feasible. So for now, we want to keep the status. We'll keep our Barossa breed, but probably do more research and improve on it. Our population is somewhere around the 550,000 heads of cattle, which is a positive side to it. But our grazing capacity can easily get up to 1.52 million cattle as a province. That's the grazing capacity that we have, the carrying capacity in the province. Cattle, especially beef rearing in Western province, is providing a major livelihood, not only to the cattle keepers, but across the value chain of processors, traders, retailers, and consumers. <laughs> Apecom Yakutusa. How can you own the more problem? Can you go to Chile, Kikamo and Bonucula? Naconacaco, we are going to Tusa. Eh, but to Baconago, but I was so Masua Camo. I vacuoli to come to Tufmana to get water to my to go on the water collector. Eh. Business <laughs> 
kuleka komu hapo wafuma na matini mashirengi ya hao kanda kona yo yesu ana eh, profit ya hao hamo ocho walo ni ni, ni expense yene ule kile eh, likomuze wako na kufuma na mana kwa ilimu eh, nikakuli neluka li uli likomuze kwa nakuwe za fair six kwa nafa ma three years more kwa nyoko vya tuko mdutu kwa nakuwe za uh, kwa fair tuko pa nthetie tukwa tuko akize ofera kwa nukize nga atazo kupangile mateni Eh hey, nshangu usoli watunda ni sauli wakini saba na bali kolo kwa na mocha kwa na moweza chwani kizenga ata maeni mandu usoli wa ya wana mo In some areas of western province such as Senanga district farmers are making efforts to improve the local breed but this is done with caution to ensure the indigenous barotsi breed does not go into extinction Our local animals barotsi uh, for market, they grow very slow, and uh, we decide that uh, on improving this, we are going to have advantage because we are going to speed up the, the growth. Even uh, when we cross with the Boran, we are going to have a uh, very good uh, breed because the uh, Boran is a bit resistant to most of the diseases and the drought. Because uh, one, there is a very big fast changes over this uh, global warming. We find it very hard during dry uh, period. This grass you see here, when you come around uh, October, you find just the sand. You will not see anything here. And because of the issue of burning, they burn everything here. So we find it very hard. So the, the, the Boran can survive in that uh, harsh environment. That's why we decided to crossbreed with our barrows because uh, barrows it has adapted it, it adapted to this place for a, a long period of time and uh, the so-called boran that is a, a desert animal uh, here is coming from ethiopia the original place where that uh, that animal is coming from so we decided to to, to, to crossbreed with it and uh, because they have improved it the boran itself so uh, that made us to, to, to crossbreed with the, the Barozi so that for marketing we are going to get a, 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 a good grade of meat or a choice meat. Despite the growth prospects, the cattle industry grapples with a number of challenges, hindering farmers from yielding maximum benefits. These include inadequate development funding and rampant livestock disease outbreaks requiring proper disease control mechanisms. Diseases of national economic importance such as East Coast fever or corridor disease and contagious bovine plural pneumonia have been a challenge to southern and western provinces respectively. Yes, we have experienced a lot of diseases. Uh, as I have said, uh, I said I've been in beef maybe since I was born, I, I found these animals. Uh, if it was not of the diseases, maybe I was going to be talking of maybe five or ten thousand animals. Sina CBPP, ni ye CH, ni ama nguma tukwa swana inge black leg, chualo. Haba kona kutusanga, haba muso. Balu, bahaya anga balu tabi ya kweza, kweza prevent hili kumzalu na kwa pakulizanto. Kulirisike zaba ni matuku wao. Chwele, matuku wama nguma swana inge bola mpuskin. Matuku wama nguoni kabulela swana inge butuku mbani wali wabu mwa. Kia mangata, ona hape wona haba na mali. Hakuli baleki sange mili ya ni kabu bebe, haku bani ya utubuliki. Kuba fumane la huu butata, kuba bela butata. Eze riza utichwele runama fama ziru alu za kuli likomzalu na zashwa. Kwa kufuma na muli ya ni hakuna. Some of the challenges include common diseases that the farmers can actually control, like uh, black leg diseases, uh, anthrax. I think uh, not too long ago we had the... Uh, on the media that Karabo was one of the districts that was hit with the outbreak of, of anthrax. And thank God we have contained that and our farmers have continued with their normal way of doing their farming business. 
other diseases that uh, poses a, a threat on the livestock industry, we are looking at uh, uh, tick-borne diseases. We may not have corridor disease in Karawo or in Western Province, but there are other tick-borne diseases that uh, actually uh, reduce the potential of these animals to reproduce and maintain their, their health. The Indaba Agricultural Policy Research Institute, a multi-stakeholder think tank, does research to understand the opportunities and challenges of the livestock sector. Among the things that we have found from our studies is the issue, which is one of the major challenges that the smallholder livestock farmers face, is the issue of uh, diseases and high mortality rates. And some of the recommendations that we have given is that there is need to strengthen the extension services, especially for livestock. Uh, most farmers, uh, they are not so much uh, knowledgeable in some of the best practices for keeping their livestock. We were told by district officers to say a farmer would approach them to say one of the animals they, are, they have been attacked by diseases but they were not willing to sell even one cattle to to cover the cost. So there is need to change, to really change the mindset of farmers to look at livestock not just as form of prestige, but as form of, uh, as a business which can be used to generate more income and also improve their livelihoods. One thing again that we've noticed, uh, farmers don't really, they haven't put a distinction between management diseases and diseases of national importance. So when you talk of management diseases, those are at the cost of the farmer themselves. But for a farmer, whether it's a management disease or a disease of national importance, they are looking up to government. But government cannot sustain all the problems that the farmers face. So issues of dis management diseases, they need to be sensitized that issues of management diseases, they are cutted by the farmer themselves. But diseases of national importance, that's where now government comes in. So this message has to be passed on to the, to the farmers through the extension services. Poor markets for cattle trade, mainly due to lack of processing facilities in form of abattoirs and milk collection centers, among others, affect the cattle business. Presently, the Pamalat closed. We don't have where to sell milk. Instead, we just take the milk at black market at a cheaper price because we are milking average of 200 to 230 liters per day. So it's, uh, you know the, the supply is higher than the, the demand. So as a result, the milk is cheap. That's the major challenge and even the diseases. We have a lot of potential when it comes to milk production, also beef production. However, we do not have any processing that is happening currently in Monze district. So this is a really big um, investment opportunity that if the government could look into investing. This is one area that we should go into. Hides and skins are only preserved here in Monze, and then they are taken out of the district. And uh, carcasses are also taken out of the district. Nothing is processed within the district. Yet we are producing a lot of um, livestock. Nibule renge kana kwa yachwale. Nutuwa kulivaiza 15 kwacha pe kilo. Ze mumane kima 14 kwacha pe kilo. Hamka is a compare kwa liko mzee inzi mwabuko wako. Ani vulela buko wa ni vulela lusaka. Southern, mani kuyo fitacholo kwa northern ni kukumu. Liko mzaa tula mokulu na hakuna. Kwa kuli kwa mwye chipile kwa nito ye tulile kuli kufile mari. Kie kufile 3,000. Mifoku mkiasi kuwa. Hapia uibabale la hande kulatira milao ya bala jisito. Kwa da kuli hakuna. Aliru fihande mari hakuna. Haiva njimu uso hapi. Usalu kwa lule la kuli liko mzalu na kambelu wako na kuli longa anga kuisaneba kwa lusaka. Kopa belu utikakai. Kwa litula. No kalu to Sahulu. Kono ali komzalu na ali rumerezui. Di ferela fela ona mo lokali mo western province. We are not allowed to kisari komzalu na outside western province. Ika ba kalama ba kap. Aluzi bi bona mo ndi ba ba ziva ba muso kapa bona ba wantu ba mo ndi ba 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 veterinary. Ni sepaku mo ndi kama tu kuchwalo. The marketing issue is tricky. Yeah, especially during the rain season, you find that you know. People want to sell animals, uh, many, maybe because of the school going to drain. So that you, you find that uh, the prices go down. 
and mostly you see the abattoirs or the people who buy animals, they are the ones who dictate the, the price. Instead of us, the owners of the animals, to dictate the price. That's the challenge we have. Other challenges include high cost of borrowing, high cost of feedstock, and absence of input support. Our beef sector. Otherwise, about six to seven hundred. But Chambera more traditional. He just farm, he any commercial farm. You want to go? He go in Gulu Lagambo. Go to Tanzania. Mainly, we want to even to prove this more than where you see, because what we want is even to be buying already improved bulls from Lusaka. But the problem is where to get money from, because when you go to the banks or when we go to the banks. As farmers, we are not allowed to get loans. Even if you, I have a house, even if I go to the bank, they will say, no, uh, you cannot put your, uh, your, your, your animals as a crotro. Eh? So, and you, you cannot, we cannot give you, you a loan to invest it or to buy animals because the animals, it will be very easy for you to, to take them away. It will be very difficult to, to trace you. So we are finding it very hard to get loans or assistance from because the only place where we can get aid or assistance from the government. In addressing such challenges, a practical and effective livestock development policy is critical. There is need for government as well as the private sector to get involved in establishing breeding centers for animals. Most farmers, uh, they need to restock their animals and they need uh, better breeds than what they currently have. For instance, we did a study on daily value chain and we noticed that the production of milk from the local animals is very, very low. And one of the major issues is the type of breeds that the farmers have. Then the other issue is uh, establishing of abattoirs or even slab, uh, slaughter slabs. You don't know where those animals are being slaughtered from. So that, those issues uh, bring out the issues of uh, the, the health is safety for the, for the people that are, that are eating, that are consuming those, the animals that are being sold. Where are they being slaughtered from? Are, have they been uh, cleared by the, 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 the veterinary department? And so such issues need to be looked into. Then the other thing is the issue of uh, feeding. Most farmers are using the same intensive system where animals are just freely uh, allowed to graze in the communal air, uh, grazing areas and they are only supplemented during the rain seasons. But what we observe is that during the dry season, the, the grass is dry. And so when you look, when you look at the nutrients that are, uh, the animals are getting from dry grass, it's very, very little. So there is need for training of farmers in the production of feed uh, production of fodder for the animals which can be used during the, the, the dry season. Then the last thing is the issue of funding towards the livestock sector. It's really the funding so far when we've analyzed the agriculture budget there is very little that goes to the livestock sector so there is need for sustained funding in order to improve uh, the livestock sector because we know that it's it, it's, uh, it's one of the major components for the farmers' uh, income and also their assets. Mm -hmm.